Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Marielle Meras. I'm the Deputy Head of Strategy and Innovation of the French Red Cross, as uh, Gregory was saying. And so I'm, I'm here to share with you today what we, the French Red Cross, which is a social organization, not a BR insider actor, thinks about different immersive technologies and is intending to jump into it and to make, to let's say, take an edge on immersive technology to create more social impact on our activities. You know, like this month, we're actually celebrating the 30 years anniversary of the World Wide Web. And 30 years ago, the promise was actually quite huge. It was basically to say, OK, um, we're going to democratize the world. We're, we're going to empower people. Everybody will have more access to information. We'll be able to share knowledge. Thank you. I generally think we're not quite there yet, because uh, just to take um, a short example, uh, today we have 10 million people in France declaring that they're actually lost with technologies and that, that, that they actually feel excluded from digital society. One more major uh, huge uh, question today is addiction to video games. It has actually become a strong public health matter to be dealt by the state and also by us, French Red Cross. Um, so, you know, the main situation is that social needs uh, of vulnerable people keep increasing in France, but also in other countries. They're becoming more and more complex, and we, social organizations, have to face with it and have to answer better so that like, people can move on and be more like, included in society. So, you know, like we, we have like quite strong burden under um, our shoulders, which is basically to face this kind of unprecedented challenge posed by the 21st century. Uh, I talked about social needs. We've got a, another strong issue, which is the decline basically of our, of our financial resources. We, we're also kind of welcoming new forms of engagement, of civic engagement of people and employees. And last but not least, we've got this incredible world of modern technologies, immersive technologies also um, growing up around us, and we want to uh, make the most of it. So um, we're launching this year um, something that we call 21. Uh, 21 is the Social Innovation Accelerator of the French Red Cross. Uh, what does that mean? Basically, we're starting to work with social healthcare startups um, from, from the outside, basically working in our field of intervention. We're working closely with them, and we provide them with two main things, which are actually our, our value as the French Red Cross. First of all, our testing field. Um, we've got a little bit more than 1,700 1, social and healthcare facilities everywhere in France. Uh, we have 20,000 employees just in France working in, in those facilities. We also have 60,000 volunteers acting in everywhere in, in the country as well. So we've got two things, testing field for startups and professional expertise. We know people, we know the needs, we know how the healthcare system works, but we're not tech people. We're not like uh, like all the people here in this room. So we're launching this accelerator to work closely with the startups and to invest a lot more on VR and AR. We want to seize this opportunity for us um, to you know like to develop experiences in virtual reality to leverage the social impact of our several activities. And we're now exploring three main areas you, you mentioned, uh, Amy, by the way. So awareness uh, and engaging people. This is kind of like the easiest way to start with virtual reality. Uh, basically, the idea is to, you know, like to use empathy uh, and, and all this kind of like emotion, emotions you can have while you experience the life of somebody else. Um, caring as well and developing therapies and also training, uh, training because we, 
the, because the French Red Cross is the major training training institution in France, we have a bit more than 20,000 students every year. So we train them to be uh, nurse staff, like different, you know, like health professions. So, so um, first main use case we're working on right now is awareness um, on major social issues, just to give you like a few examples of what's been done already. The International Committee of the French Red Cross, of the Red Cross, sorry, um, launched last year um, a, a, an AR experience, which is called Enter the Room, where you basically experience, what you're like in the room of, of a, a child you don't really know, and war is, war is actually coming to your doorstep. Uh, we've developed another um, another product, which is Sense of Home, where this time you actually follow the path of a Syrian, of a young woman who's a Syrian refugee, through her kind of you know migratory route, um, which is obviously very very hectic, and the Right Choice, which is also about um, like war within cities, because this, this has become the new reality of conflicts, unfortunately, also um, in in the world. So. So we, we don't want to use like, you know, like fact and figures, very objective, um, like arguments, ra rational and so on. It's just about like empathy, just, you know, showing how is it to be like on the other side. The second main use case um, we're working on is about care and therapy. Uh, we've got two main uh, projects already, already set up um, in France. One which is about like psychomotor re rehabilitation and 3D analysis of like human movement and fall. So it's especially dedicated to elderly people. So basically, it's it's like it's a set of different technologies uh, using like immersive ones, captors, to to actually track the movement of an old person, try identify what is actually the problem, and sort of recommend several potential therapies. Um, our, one, of, one of our hospitals uh, in Lyon also developed um, two years ago a, a small AR experience, which is called Minidoc, which is basically, um, which distracts the attention of young patients, of, of children being cured for their, for the cancer. So, you know, like they go through like a quite painful process and very very painful therapy with um, chemotherapy and so it's just like distracts them it's just like you know drive them somewhere else and so that they don't actually think about that pain and as you mentioned Amy as well um, we're also exploring training we consider it as one of the major things to be to be addressed in the upcoming years. Um, once more, just to tell you about um, another project that is already uh, going on in Nice, in the southeast of France, <laughs> for, for, for those who are not familiar with French geography, um, where basically we have a set up a set of um, of VR solution that train nursing students to administer treatments and to perform. Uh, blood um, transfusion. Basically, the idea here is to use virtual reality in very specific cases where, you know, like the gesture to be done by, by the staff is really, really technical, quite dangerous, because if you, if you don't do it correctly, there, there's like quite huge risk of <laughs> for the patient. And so basically, the, the idea is to use virtual reality in this specific um, Jesses to be learned by students and by professional afterwards because it's also good to refresh um, you know during your like career path when you you were trained like 20 years ago you're now like a healthcare staff it's cool to refresh sometimes the knowledge uh, also last but not least um, first ed training um, the French Red Cross is one of the major trainers, sorry, trainers in France of first ed. Um, so basically, 
there is a certificate um, delivered like through the state kind of that that says okay this person is clearly able to save a life so it's a seven hours training so you know like it's quite long um, we trained last year overall a bit more than than 150 percent either trained or just like um, like rose awareness on this on this gestures and we we are in a in a framework where the president macron asked all this all these organizations to be able to train 80 percent of the french population by uh by 20 to 2022 i guess or something so it's huge you know like today it's less than 20 percent of people and we have to go up to 80 people. And it's not just about training. It's about making sure that people will actually be able to act the day they will face the situations. Because, you know, it's different to learn it in a room. And then when you're facing somebody and when you have to do, like, a heart massage, it's completely different. And that's why, once more, virtual reality can, can be a, like, wonderful tool. Because if you learn to, to perform, for instance, a heart massage in a quite, like, you know, stressful environment, they, they could, you know, like, you could have, like, a fire close from, from your location, you could have, like, a car crash, you could have, you know, like, many different situations. And so, like, you're, you're actually, if you experience this while, while you're being trained, you'll be a lot more able to act the day it'll actually happen, and this is exactly what matters, and this is what we call social impact. Just to uh, provide you with a bit more like scientific uh, report on this, we know that surgical um, apprentices trained by virtual reality are 29 percent faster than the traditional trained counterparts, five times less likely to injure a patient, which is <laughs> not a not a small issue and six times less prone to penalizing er errors. So, you know, like in, in training, this is just completely huge. Just to end up on what we think, um, what, what we think um, that are the key challenges to be, to be addressed in the, in the next years, you know, like the French Red Cross is a social organization. So we're really interested in virtual reality. I show you several use use cases. So now we have very practical and technical questions to actually scale this up and to actually completely, you know, scale up our usage of virtual reality. The first question is very simple. It's about training our own professional to use virtual reality so that they can actually, you know, like either train themselves or like act with somebody so this is this is huge. We have eighty thousand actors to train. Um, I just let you imagine how how big is the, the topic. The second main issue is, is is actually technical equipments, hardware. How do we find a way, you know, to get access to these technologies everywhere in France, especially in remote areas when you're not in Lyon, you're not in Paris, you're in you're in a like completely remote area. The third main question is the business model. The main business models in, in VR environment is based on license. We, as I said, we are too big for that. We can't afford licenses, which means one thing, at least today, which is we have to produce the experiences ourselves if we, if we don't want to lose too much cash to deploy it. And last but not least, there is this question of positive impact and ethics. I was, I was speaking uh, earlier about this new major question, which is addiction to video games. We really need to make sure that we can actually use virtual reality in the right way and to produce only positive impact and avoid, you know, like sort of bilateral effects on cognition, on, you know, like other, other areas, especially regarding young persons because we have to care about them. So that's it. So th these were just the, the main open questions I'd be happy to discuss with you um, afterwards if you have 
if you have any thoughts on that. But um, thank you very much for having me, and um, I wish you a lovely conference. Thank you.